was your initial reaction when you found out about John Robinson? I mean, he drafted you. You guys signed a big contract. What, what was your reaction? I think I was shocked just like everybody else was. You're always one. Like, you, you take responsibility for, for everything. It, do you feel, like, at all responsible, like you could have done better to, you know, carry this franchise better so, so that he didn't get fired? Um, I mean, I always think I could do better um, after every game and, you know, especially after these last couple of weeks. But to say all that, I mean, I don't, you know, I can't say all that. I'll just focus on me doing better, playing better, and whatever I can to help this team win and help this organization. Did you talk to John at all yesterday and just tell him anything? And we, yeah, we had a, a personal conversation, and um, that's the thing about John. His door is always open to us to come in and talk throughout the years. I definitely did that a lot with him. I um, definitely ap appreciate him throughout the years of, you know, helping me. He drafted me. Um, he might pass on me two or three times, but <laughs> he still got me here, and um, definitely appreciate him what he's done for me and my family. And um, just a fun ride to be able to come in and help him change the culture and you know, help just help turn this organization around. Jeff has talked a lot about how he thinks togetherness can be the thing that takes you guys over the hump you know, down the road in the playoffs against some of these better teams that have gotten your number. Where, where do you think togetherness fits in versus execution versus skill level with all of that stuff? Yeah, I think, I mean, we're stronger together, so I think that's all we are preaching, are, are preaching and, you know, are, are working to do and just, you know, stick through it, uh, continue to work, continue to get better, continue to push each other, hold each other accountable and work throughout the week and get ready for Sundays. Kind of moving like Derek, I guess, coming off back-to-back -back losses and wanting to kind of get things fixed in the run game. What what, what have meetings been like? What have kind of uh, film work been like? Coming out and getting better, um, like I always say, after each game. And when I come up here every Thursday, it's getting better, improving. And um, guys looking to do that, and that's how we've been working. What uh, Maybe besides the 99-yard run, what, what do you recall, Derek, from that huge game you had against uh, – Jacksonville, you know, a few years ago, the what's uh, I don't care about that anymore. That's four years ago. It, sh it don't matter. Did, did that um, probably get the same response? But I'll try. Um, that that game mean anything for you in terms of like your career, like like you know, confidence uh, uh, wise or or anything along those lines? How I'm feeling right now? No, I don't care. Again, that's over with. I didn't ask answer twenty questions about that game. The game is in the past. It's new team, new players. It don't matter. Uh, you're named Walter Payton Man of the Year nominee for this team for the second year in a row. Maybe what does that mean to you, uh, you know, to do it for the second year in a row, and, and what kind of example do you want to set? Um, it's a great honor, um, you know, especially the guys who won it, the, the things they've done off the field and the players they are, the men that they are. And, um, you know, I try to do those things and carry those, carry those characteristics um, every day. And, you know, like I said, the uh, morals and principles Walter Payton stood for and the things that he did and the weight that this award holds. Um, I feel like every athlete should, try, should, should strive to be like that every day. I know I try to do, you know, that as well and, you know, just try to be an inspiration by my foundation and what I do off the field, you know, and just, you know, being a light to anyone that needs it on and off the field as well. Foundation, like one of the things you want to do is, is help youth who are, who are at a disadvantage. Why, why is that so important for you to, you know, go out of your way to make sure that that disadvantage is, is, is made up for? Yeah, I think whenever you, you know, try to build a foundation and, you know, something that, you know, is a resource to the community, you found what's closest and dear to your heart. And I think youth is, you know, the youth is something that, you know, I really care a lot about and I really want to help and be that resource. and. Anything I can do with my foundation to help, I always want to do that. And, um, you know, they're the future. So anytime I can, you know, help them, you know, strive or anything like that, I'm always down for it. And my foundation definitely try to, tries to represent that. What's the most important aspect of trying to get it cranked back up again after a couple of weeks where there hasn't been a lot of opportunities and a lot of success? Does it just take one good run maybe to get things going back in the right direction? If you watch this film, come out here and practice, you work hard and execute in the game. Um, and that's what you got to do. That's what it all comes down to. It's a grown man business, grown man league. Simple as that. How excited was Julius Chestnut Sunday? And did you uh, did you talk to him about uh, about you know what it's like to be in your first get, get manage your emotions through your first NFL game? I don't think Julius Julius had you no know, like crazy emotion. I think he was just excited and I was excited for him to see him get out there and finally get his opportunity. 
and I know he's been waiting. You know, he works hard. He comes into work and does his job. And you know, for it to finally, you know, happen for him, I was really happy for him. I think he did a great job. Jay, when you see uh, Trevor Lawrence on film, how much do you think he's improved from year one now through a good chunk? Yeah, I, d I think he's improved a lot. I do. I think uh, they're doing a good job schematically with him, um, finding ways to get the ball in his hands. He's always been really good with the RPO stuff, the stuff he's done in college. Um, that stuff's showing up. Um, I think his just command, his understanding. You see him check in. You see him doing some different things at the line of scrimmage now. Um, you see him make all the throws. Like he makes the deep out throw, um, the go balls, the ones from the opposite hash to the sideline. Um, so I do. I think he's improved a lot. Do you think Shane on the on the Christian Fulton call? You know, the the one where he got hurt on the on the touchdown pass. Yeah, I mean, I mean what, if, can, if he, can he do anything differently? We tell him. The, the rule is supposed to be if he's got position in that space, he owns the space. So whether the ref saw him as moving his feet, it's kind of like a charge in basketball, right? If you're moving your feet, you don't really own that space. But if you're established and you own the space, technically that's his space and it shouldn't have been called whether, I mean, it still got ran over, right? So it's still going to be a touchdown. But um, I, that's how I would compare it. We've just seen with, with I guess, uh, David now heard you obviously dealing without Zach. I mean, other guys have been playing inside. What, what's Monty done with his opportunities, and maybe how could his role increase even more? Yeah, I mean, I think he's out here working to improve. The thing about Monty, he missed all spring, he missed all training camp. So, I mean, there's a lot of catching up going on right now for him when we're in game plan mode a little bit. So, I mean, I think each week he's getting more comfortable with everything we're asking him to do. He's the, all those little things that, especially year one to year two, man, that's it huge year for these rookies in terms of development. And then you miss that off season, um, just continuing to focus on the fundamentals, the techniques, the alignments, all the little things that come with playing this game. Um, that's where he's still trying to play catch up a little bit, you know? So, um, but he has, he's improved since he's been out here working. He's been able to get back on the field and um, it'll be good to see him out here come Sunday. Jeffrey's not been quite as dominant the last couple of weeks. Is that, you think, more of a product of the fact that he hasn't been able to practice as much and playing through the ankle, or is that he's getting even more attention now that Danico's out of the lineup? Probably a combination of both. I do. I think probably all those things you mentioned are probably playing a, a part in that. With, with A.J. Brown and what he was able to do, I know you guys had a lot of focus on the run. Do you think like maybe there was a little too much focus on that and not enough allocated to – Stopping yeah, I think, uh, I mean, obviously, for what they threw for, I would say we didn't have a good enough game plan against the pass. You know, like, we didn't give our guys a good enough plan to go out there and stop them against the pass. And it's only so much you can do, normal ball, first, second down, in terms of what you're trying to do to take guys away. And there's, there's things we've done in the past to help us. Um, you get a little bit more into that stuff on third down in some of those situations where you're not really susceptible to the run as much. Um, but yeah, I think with Hurts and what he did previously that, that week against Green Bay um, in the run game, what they kind of showed schematically there, and then also his scrambling ability, I think all that kind of played a part. Are we seeing maybe Danico's value beyond like his individual play, but with the versatility and what he means to guys on, on either side of him and, and behind him? Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, I alluded to it last week a little bit. I think the communication, just the familiarity of guys, you're out there with guys that you've been out there with a ton of snaps, right? So the communication aspect, the coordination is vital in this league in terms of rushing, especially against these mobile quarterbacks. Um, I think the, the leadership in general, the energy he brings on game day, um, I mean, he has tremendous value for us. There's no secret, um, whether it's football-wise on the field, his production, or just all the intangible stuff that he brings. What do you tell Trey Avery on the touchdown pass? That, I mean, <laughs> try to find the ball and get, get get your hand up through the pocket. You know, so he was in good coverage. Um, just AJ made a play. You had talked that, like I think the previous week about when we talked about the T Higgins catch about maybe your DBs. You know, playing a little bit more physical. Did, did you see kind of more evidence of, the, of that against Philly also? Uh, I think in certain certain spots. I mean, a lot of that depends on kind of the coverage a little bit. I mean, obviously down the field, you get in those one-on-one -on -one situations, which more times than not, like those down the field throws are going to be some version of one-on-one -on -one situations, you know? Um, I think at that point, just trying to be more physical and be on, on body where you're not try, fighting to – try to get back in position without fouling where you might be a little more cautious. Um, I think being on body early, um, but 
depending on the coverage, we got to do a good job of being able to disrupt some routes and not let guys get running. What do you think about Bud on Sunday, and you're hopeful that he's going to be in a position where he's surging late? Yeah, I thought he did some good things. Um, hopefully that can continue. We, we need him. You know, we need him. He knows that. Um, we need him to go out there and make impact plays for us. Like, that's why he's here. Um, that's what we signed him for. And hopefully here down the stretch, we can get some more of those. How disappointing that Molden hadn't been able to, to get right this year. Yeah, I mean, I hate it for him. I do. Um, I mean, he, he battled. He, he felt it early. He was trying to battle through it. Then it kind of had a setback. And again, it's just one of those things, man. It, these, some of these soft tissue stuff, like, you never really know. Um, you come back too early at times, or you re aggravate it, then it gets in your head at times, you know. So, I mean, it's been a battle for him. I hate it for the kid. Um, obviously, we miss him, you know. Like, he was a very productive player for us last year with a lot of versatility. Um, but hopefully, he can get right now, and we'll kind of see where he is come whenever he's off. What are you expecting from the from your new guys? What kind of skill sets they bring? I guess Basham and, and Reed. Yeah, I think uh, Basham's big. He's long. He's played in this league. He's experienced. Um, I actually remember him coming out a little bit. So, I mean, I think he's done a good job since he's been here, just in terms of meeting with Crow, kind of getting an understanding of what's going on. But I mean, with all those edge guys, we're looking, especially those bigger dudes, we're looking for physical dudes who play through the face. You know, guys that are attacking. Um, who aren't reactive. Like, we want to be on the attack out there, setting edges, rushing the pass, or whatever that might be. Um, so hopefully we get a little bit of that from them. And then obviously with Reed, I think, I mean, we really haven't seen seen much of those guys yet. Um, but I think, he's, I think he's a smart kid, you know, and I think he brings some versatility for us, um, whether it's inside, outside, whatever that might be. I think he's he's got some versatility, and even yesterday, just I think he signed during meetings, and then he's out there actually going through stuff and and not really busting a whole lot. So encouraged by him right now. We're seeing a guy uh, for the first time, like Etienne. Um, I, I know it's primarily film that you're looking yeah. at what he's done. Do you talk about a comp too, maybe that this guy's like so and so, and we did this against him and be. Yeah, I think as as a staff, we we kind of look at the whole picture a little bit, just in terms of all their skill players and how they're going to attack us and and what those skill sets are. Um, I mean, there's always conversations where we got to kind of pick and choose a little bit. Like they're extremely talented, they're extremely fast. Like this is probably one of the faster teams we played across the board at receiver. Obviously, Etn like he is an explosive dude who can get downhill. Um, so that all comes into play a little bit when we scheme, and I think even more so when we're talking to the players about making sure we're on our game plan and what we're doing just in terms of, like, they're going to find it. They're going to exploit it. Like, if, if we're not in the right position or we let these guys run after they catch the ball, like, it's not going to be good for us. So um, hopefully we can get some stops here and slow them down a little bit. With Roger well, McQuarrie, there's a lot of talk about the rookie wall. Do you yeah. feel like like he's hitting that? And if, if he is, like how do you coach him through and, and get him to play strong down the stretch? Yeah, I think with all these rookies, I mean, their their college season ended last week or the week before, you know. So you got – it's a long – I remember my first year in the league, we played Mexico City on a Monday night, and it was like week 11. And my college team I came from just got done. I'm like, holy hell, like we still got six more weeks of this thing. Um, so it is. Like it's, a, it's an adjustment. Um, I think they just got to take it day by day. I do. I think they got to grind. They got to stay focused on the job at hand each, every single day, right? And not, not look too far ahead, not look behind of what we've done and just focus on improving. And that's what we're preaching to all these guys right now. Like these teams that go places, they improve, especially late in the year, you see the improvement. So we got to get back to doing that, improving, and then obviously be able to carry that over on Sunday. Where would the improvement have been on, on that Devontae Smith touchdown? Yeah, I think he he uh, they ran a post, they ran a quarters beater, um, and he just kind of weaved outside. He he got too loose outside, and then he was able to break it in. So just understanding like that's the thing with a lot of our guys, like just based on what coverage we're playing now, like we got to know the worst thing that can happen to us and make sure we defend that, and then we got to play through everything else. Do you think you know the way Devonta like he? kind of lied with his eyes looking that way and then broke back. Like, do you think? Yeah, I mean, that's a fact. That's what those receivers are going to try to do, right? They're going to try to get you to go one way, then go the other way. So that's that's always a factor. But understanding now, like, that's where you're most vulnerable is inside deep. 
in that coverage. So just making sure we're, we're understanding, we're defending what we're most vulnerable to. And if they, if they throw it deep out, so be it. Like, we got to line up and play again. When you look at Derek, like, over the last three weeks or so, it's like less than a yard after getting the football, he's getting hit. What can you guys do to get him to that fourth and fifth step that, that you say is so important? Yeah, we've got to be better uh, across the board. You know, it, it starts with making sure that, that we're good schematically, uh, that all of us are doing our job, uh, you know, from a teaching standpoint, getting everybody on the same page. We've got to be able to get into these combinations and run off the football, trust our landmarks, um, you know, and I believe that we'll uh, get back to that. I think we've had a couple of weeks of, of kind of, uh, you know, not like us uh, performances, but I, I trust that we're going to get back to that. The, the passing game, Todd, you know, when, when you guys haven't had your customary ability to, to run the ball, much has that made a difference? Yeah, I think uh, I think we've done some decent things uh, from a growth standpoint the last few weeks in the past game, you know, going all the way back to uh, Green Bay. Uh, you know, really the situations is what changes things. When you're in second and long and, and then you're, you know, trying to get into either a third and manageable or, or you're throwing a bunch on, uh, you know, kind of, known passing downs that changes the the concepts a little bit so we know that it's all tied together right you got to be able to run the football to have your play pass come to life uh and and certainly you need to sustain drives to be able to throw those counter punches and compliments maybe i should say that the uh, the pass pro i guess in, in particular when you when you're in those kind of situations like you mentioned how that a significant impact you know from from the lack of room you know, when you're putting yourself in a situation where the defense uh, you know has a pretty good idea that it, you're going to throw the ball it gives some pretty talented edge rushers a, a chance to pin their ears back so going back to camp you kind of had Racy McMath pegged as a guy who could help take the top off the defense and maybe create some things underneath he's missed a lot of time what's a realistic expectation for him to contribute now yeah I think we're figuring that out as the week goes on you know just where he's at physically and, and what he's able to handle from a workload standpoint obviously you guys remember Racy's skill set you know he's a big strong fast player for us and and uh, you know certainly somebody that would be uh, nice to have but I'll kind of deal with that, uh, you know, as the week unfolds, and if Coach Fable tells me he's indeed available. Is Dennis State mentioned the possibility of maybe getting Raven Clark in the uh, in the mix a little bit in the competition? What have you seen from him as far as improvement goes, and how, how you think Dennis do, has done over the last couple of weeks? Yeah, you know, I, I think uh, Dennis probably falls into the the same category as a lot of people. That there's been some inconsistency, and there have been flashes of some good things. Uh, you know, he, he's done a nice job, um, you know, with some of the techniques that we've asked him to improve on, uh, you know, in, in pass pro. Uh, but then there's been some lapses as well, you know, and, and I think that that uh, is true to a lot of people on offense. And uh, we, myself included, need to try to find a way to uh, stay in a better rhythm, uh, you know, and just get in that flow with that, within the game. Which leads to LaRaven, you know, he's been working his tail off and, uh, you know, certainly is a, a guy that, you know, has some experience in this league. And, uh, you know, I know he's chomping at the bit, so we'll see where that thing uh, kind of goes as, as the week goes and as reps in practice uh, kind of unfold. And, you know, we try to create competition around here as best we can. That, that spot's no different. Dennis has been treated like he's unquestionably the best left tackle on this team since Taylor went down. Is, is he unquestionably the best left tackle on this team? I think he, uh, I think he's done uh, enough good things uh, to warrant continuing uh, to have opportunities. Uh, we just need to be more consistent as an offense overall, and Dennis knows that he's no different. How does he go about building that consistency? How do you go from inconsistent to consistent? Yeah, you got to work really hard uh, from a technique standpoint. You know, iron down some of those things that, that maybe you're, uh, you know, struggling with uh, in certain areas of the game. And then it becomes a, a confidence thing too. You got to go throw your fastball, and you got to believe that your fastball's got enough juice to get home. So, uh, you know, those are things that we're working on. And, and it, again, it's not just Dennis who's uh, dealing with some of those issues. What did Traylon show in terms of talent and courage? I guess to make that catch and take that hit the way he did Sunday. Yeah, it was a, a shame that uh, that unfolded the way that it did. You know, I, I really think he's been a, a part of the uh, progression of the pass game. You know, he's done a nice job with the opportunities he's had down the field. Uh, and, you know, he's playing faster and more confident. Um, I tell you what, from a, a, a guy that coached quarterbacks for a long time and spends a lot of time sitting in there with the quarterbacks, when a guy goes up and makes a play in traffic like that, builds a lot of confidence for the future. So I look forward to when we have Traylon back out there ready to roll. Talk about 
Well, I think we asked you this last week, but again, with the red zone situation, and Tannehill said just everything's magnified down there, which yeah. is obviously true, but anything you saw in last week's game, too, that you're seeing the trend with it going kind of backwards? Yeah, well, uh, first of all, missed opportunity, right? We got down there into a third and less than a yard and had an opportunity. Uh, you know, we went on the ball and we were going to run a, a pretty – uh, staple concept for us, uh, you know, and pick up a first down there and be first and goal inside the 10 where, uh, you know, we've had some success uh, over the years and, and this year included. Um, and, you know, stubbed our toe a little bit, backed ourselves up, had a new player in a position, um, you know, that he hadn't executed and, and we misfired and it led to a field goal. And I felt like that was a, a drive, a scenario in the game that kind of took a little bit of steam out of our uh, engine, you know, and uh, we got to understand that's the strength of this offense. There's an expectation when we get down there, and uh, we didn't live up to that expectation in that drive. But it doesn't uh, waver my confidence in our ability to be a good red zone football team. That is. Aaron Brewers played a full season as a starter. The fact that he's undersized as as the season's gone on is he is that starting to become more of a factor in him wearing down? I think that uh, Aaron knows exactly who he is and how he has to play with the skills that he has and, and uh, you know the, the skill set that he's dealing with. And uh, I think he's done a nice job of progressing uh, in some areas. And obviously, consistency is the common word I'll say with everybody. He's just got to uh, make sure that he's as consistent as possible in those techniques. Any thought at all to, uh, I know you been pretty much committed to Dylan at guard, but any thought at all with these inconsistencies that you mentioned and, and giving him some some snaps or reps, even a practice at, at tackle? Yeah, I think I think we're looking at all options, you know, and I think that uh, Keith and, and Sully and Haas and his staff, uh, Jason Hodling, they, you know, they all um, go through that and, and, and process through individual and, and where they're at from uh, progressions and drills and their pre-practice and post-practice work and all those things. So it's uh, it's more involved of a process than, than just, you know, playing a shell game up there. So uh, I, I feel confident that we're making the right decisions. How do you approach things with Chig, whereas like you see him getting these 40-yard catches and runs and things like that? You obviously have things banked for him, but do you ever look at like, okay, he's doing this, let's draw up this to allow him to do that, so to speak? Yeah, I think opportunities are earned in this league, right? And um, certainly he's uh, done well with opportunities he's had. And there are a lot of times that things are designed uh, with him as number one or number two in the progression. The ball just might go somewhere else. Or when you're not converting third downs and you're not sustaining drives, you don't have the opportunity to get to some of the stuff that you may have designed for him. So, um, you know, Chig has been doing a nice job with what we've asked him to do. Um, you know, you got to make sure that we keep getting opportunities to get him the football. So it's safe to say, like, as you're seeing him make more plays, you're going back and looking at other ways that you could kind of designed to get him to football. Sure, similar to the comment I made about trailing, right? When the quarterback sees production from a certain player or we as coaches see them handle uh, that environment well, gives you uh, you know great motivation to give him more opportunities. Well, following up on that, and you did get the ball to him more in this game, but you're saying if things don't pan out, it sounds like you're saying if things don't pan out with other people, we don't get to the stuff where we want to get to Chick. So it kind of begs the question, why not go to Chig earlier to get to plays for, for other people? Sure, I understand the question. I would say that it's mainly uh, talking about our run game and complements with the play pass, building complementary formations and personnel groupings. So sometimes it's not just, well, we want to try this route to this guy, and if it doesn't work out, we'll come back to Chig. Uh, my point is that when you can't build a rhythm as an offense, it's hard to call those plays that you have uh, you know, designed for. Have you been somewhat restricted with, with what you could call for Ryan in some cases because of a lack of mobility and maybe you're just starting to think that could be opened up a little bit more with him moving around a little bit better now? You know, I think early in the game you saw Ryan's movement come back a, a little bit. You know, he was moving the best in the first half of the Philly game um, as he had in, in weeks, you know, and that certainly is a piece of his game uh, that is an asset for him. And so, uh, you know, as, as he's feeling uh, more and more healthy and we see where he's at with, uh, you know, coming out of the, the Knicks from the uh, Philly game, you know, we'll, we'll see how much we can move him. It sounded uh, the other day as if uh, Mike was a little frustrated about the kind of the back-to-back -back penalties on the, the field, field goal, goal attempt. And yeah. The, and the, yeah. 
What, uh, uh, what needs to happen? Yeah, not our best day. Um, and uh, that's something that just can't happen, especially on a field goal block safe look. Uh, we got to continue to reiterate with the guys that the probability of us blocking a kick or he, even him missing one is uh, extremely low for us. Uh, so we just got to make sure we continue to talk to those guys, back them up. Uh, we're not coming off the edge to try to block one. We don't want to run into the kicker. Um, you know, that's just the thing we just got to continue to talk to those guys about because we know they're going to play with effort and finish all the time. There's just a chance where, hey, guys, listen, you know, they're probably going to make this kick over 90 some percent of the time. Um, you know, we just don't want a penalty in that situation because it's going to put our defense in a bad spot. And we, and we obviously don't want that. We don't want any penalties on special teams. And, uh, you know, we, we've got to do better on that. Speaking of return man also had a field day. Yeah. That's two weeks in a row of not your best day. When are we going to see your best day? Yeah, uh, hopefully this week, you know. Um, you know, just going back and, and looking at it wasn't our best day with punting and in coverage. Uh, you know, we went back and looked at it. When we punt the ball 60-some yards and we don't get hang time, you're going to get return yards. Um, you know, and then going back and looking at how we netted still close to 43, uh, that's still not what we want. We want to go down there and cover. We want to have our best kick. And, you know, we, we would love to net you know, 50, um, not the 43 that we end up getting. But we got to continue to do better teaching these guys lanes, getting more hang time on the punts, which is going to help out our gunners and going to help out our interior players. Back on the, uh, the penalties that are caused by trying to get the blocks, but generally speaking, don't you go through the week and if you spot something on film, a weak area that you can attack and that try when you try to go for the block? Usually? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, we're always looking at certain things. Um, you know, a weakness in their protection. Uh, and then we're always going to talk to them about the long snapper. You know, what does he like to do? Does he like to head bob? Does he twitch his fingers? Does he move the ball a little bit when he tries to snap it? Uh, yeah, we're always going to try to get those weaknesses. But again, um, you know, a kick that short, we've got to be smart about everything like that. And going back to that, if there's, if there's not a weakness or you don't get a certain look, aren't they instructed to back off? Sure. Um, you know, it's... It's tough to hold players where they want to go and give great effort, you know, and we don't want to stop them from going off and, you know, trying to go and block a kick. But again, it's just us reiterating to those guys that, hey, listen, guys, it's OK. We're not giving up on the play, um, but we just got to make sure that, one, we don't hit the snapper, we don't line up there, and we don't jump off sides. It's not the first time you've said it's not what we want. We've got to coach better. Yeah. I, I mean, isn't that r repetitious and... Sure. Like it's, why why it's, are you saying that over yeah, and over? And it's tough for us to do that um, in the practice because it's not a full rep. You know, we're not going full speed at those type of reps during practice. Uh, no, I wouldn't say that. It, you know, I'll take the blame. That's on me as a special teams coordinator. We don't want to go and jump all sides. That's the biggest thing. Um, but we'll continue to talk to those guys about it and then uh, making sure that we're going to back off the ball even more so if we do end up moving, we're still not all sides. Bassum, Thompson, a lot, a lot of new guys maybe on the roster this week or, or practice again, try to get them incorporated into what you do. Yeah, one one, we're excited about having Racy back and Josh Thompson if they end up playing for us uh, this week. Um, you know, we've been looking forward to those guys coming back. Um, and then the new guys, uh, we got to continue to work with them, getting them in early, uh, staying with them late after practice, talking to them. Uh, but it's good to have some young blood coming in there, too, because they're going to be excited to play on some special teams. With, with the, uh, the hang time on the punts, what's the ideal? Was it like four yeah. and a half? Where, where are you guys now, and how can you get to that? that sure, point? you'd like to coordinate uh, um, all that stuff with the distance and the hang time. Um, you know, good punts, like the very first one that Stoney ended up hitting, he was over four or five on the hang time. And his last two, he was really around 4.6 and 4.8. And when you're punting the ball that long, 50, 60 yards, you want to obviously have higher hang times. Uh, we just got to continue to talk and just understand that even though we hit 60 yarders, we can't have 4-0 on the hang time. That's not what we're looking for. We have to get 4-4, four, 4-5, four, four, some of those type of hang times on that in order for us to go down there and cover those kicks. Because again, if we don't get the hang time and we get a long kick, you're going to get big returns. And fatigue, like for a rookie, does that factor maybe into that at this point? Or? Yeah. I, I would hope not, because I know our, our guys take pride in being uh, well-conditioned players. 
Uh, and, you know, there's no excuses for any of us. Uh, we just got to go down there and cover and making sure we got great lane distribution, uh, communicate with one another when we're running down the field. If, you know, because they're obviously going to have some type of scheme, whether they're going to wall us down. Uh, we got to do a really good job of making sure we just understand we got to spread ourselves and cast a net and do a good job. Is Agnew is dangerous returner as you're going to see this yeah, season. Yeah, he's. Uh, extremely talented, uh, dynamic dual returner, both kickoff and punt return. He's got six total touchdowns in his career. Uh, he, he's just a really good player from when he was in Detroit and even Jacksonville last year. He had two, uh, one on a kickoff return and one on a longer field goal against Arizona in the first game of the year. Uh, so whether he's back there on punt return or kickoff return, we got to make sure we do a really good job of tackling this guy. With some uncertainty, uh, I guess, as far as who your returners could be with Hassan and CJ both on the injury report, maybe what could some options be? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Dontrell Hilliard could be a guy that could be back there too. Um, and if you guys remember during the preseason, uh, we had Racy McMath back there uh, for some kickoff returns. So we're going to get guys reps today. Um, you know, we'll see how CJ and uh, Hassan look later on in the week. But uh, we got to get other guys ready and even Julius Chestnut. Um, has been back there uh, early on, part of the preseason, and, and we've been working with him too. Forward to a couple of big hits yeah. on Sunday. Is that just the nature of the business of being the return man, or is there something that he can do to maybe not get hit so hard so often? Well, I would say the first thing is we got to block better. Um, that's what we uh, take pride in. Uh, and we addressed that with the players today. You know, we don't want our man making a tackle. And when our returner takes a big hit, we all got to take accountability with that um, because we obviously don't want that to happen. Now, could there be a few things that CJ can do better on, on the setup? Possibly. But we got to go back there and block, get, get on a man, and make sure that we finish longer than the guy with the ball.